Good morning. It's good to see everybody out this Sunday morning. Uh, see lots of familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while. It's good to have y'all with us this morning. Uh, if you would, uh, ask to remember Arthur Speed in prayer. He's Arthur's not doing good. He's, some of you might know he's battling cancer, so just uh, remember him in prayer. And also the uh, Claude Head family, he passed away. And also the Stan Smith family, if you would remember these people in prayer and add them to the prayer list, uh, if you would. Um, does anybody else have any prayer requests we need to be added? Okay. All right, do we have any birthdays this past week? Rocky? Adam McCracken, yeah, Chris, yeah, several birthdays. Anna Grace, my granddaughter Emery's birthday today. So. Uh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I can't see who it is. I got I can see that back of this. Oh, there's any more over here? Okay. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Read the announcements on the on the sheet here. If, uh, these are in the pews, and there's some in the back in the foyer too. If you need one, the Hallelujah Harvest will be next Saturday, right November the fifth at 4 p.m. Uh, join for food and fellowship. Uh, if you'd like to help with activities, please fill out the paper below, uh, and they need some baked goods also for the cakewalk. So uh, there's a form on the bottom of the prior list if you would to fill those out. And also the Good uh, Samaritan Shoe Box is November the 11th, uh, meeting at the Fellowship Hall. Parents are welcome to drop their kids off, and we'll be shutting, sh shuttling them to the Dollar Tree in groups to make purchases and then uh, returning to pack shoe boxes. So, and supper will be provided for that. So that's November the 11th at 5:30. And also, always keep the challenge group in uh, in your prayers. They meet at, uh, each Wednesday night at 5:30 for supper, and then. Uh, have Bible and worship after that, so uh, doing, doing pretty good. And I think they've got a we're gonna have a cookout too for teenagers, but they've rescheduled it, so we'll announce that at a later date. Uh, at this time, we'll receive the offering, so those would come forward and we'll pick up the offering. We would stand and turn to hymn number 172 in the Songs of Faith. Yes, and there's a dinner, Pastor Appreciation Month. We're having a dinner for Madison and Diane, and uh, welcoming into the church so everybody's welcome to come and join us for that there's going to be some fried chicken and vegetables so pray that uh, all of you come and join us for that so I'll ask Demo Patterson if he would bless all of them please number 172.
brothers and sisters on this earth. They are mine by my new birth, and we shall share in that home beyond the sky. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. Everybody that would join us in the choir, we're going to sing out a song of faith.
Another Sunday morning, they're walking one by one, living testimonies of what the Lord has done. Empty, broken vessels, only grace could fill. Countless mended hearts and lives. Only God could heal. There's a miracle in every. 
three pure, one in me and one in you. We're all living proof. There's nothing God can't do. There's a miracle in every pew. There's one here, some would say, simply beat the odds. But this family of believers know it was the hand of God. There's a couple with a baby the doctor said they'd never have. And many here who've lost their way, but now we're safely back. There's a miracle in every pew one in me and one in you we're all living proof there's nothing god can't do there's a miracle in every pew lay your arms around us Oh, if you only knew the things that our Father has brought His children through, you hear it in our voices as we sing His praise. And there's one behind the pulpit who will speak to us today. There's a miracle in every pew, one in me and one in you. We're all living proof, there's nothing God can't do, there's a miracle in every pew. Yes, we're all living proof. There's nothing God can't do. There's a miracle in every pew. This is a special day for our church. Um, it's a transition and uh, a little scary, I guess, because Madison has been such a rock for us for so long, and Diane too. And I think everybody here has a story that they can say that Madison helped them with a message or with a phone call or with a visit to the hospital. When I first came to this church, I was in a pretty rough place in my life. And they welcomed us with open arms. Um, we went and spoke to them and told us our situation. And uh, I said, some people are talking about us. And he said, I don't listen to that kind of stuff. I just want you to come and you're welcome is basically what he said. And uh, when we were living in a camper with a paint booth attached to it and driving an old beat-up station wagon as I subbed on a mail route, nobody looked down on us. We were struggling financially. But this church was home to 
anybody that wants to make it that. And I know it's going to continue to be that for anybody that wants to come. We need to invite anybody we can. Time is getting short, and we all know that. But if you're here and you don't know Jesus, please come to this altar today. There's always an altar call. And if it, you don't have to wait for the altar call. We all need Jesus in our life. And we need to accept him. This song I've done one more once before, and uh, I thought it was appropriate today. Um, y'all have been such blessing. And if not for the preacher that preached to Madison, we might none of us be here today. So help me as, and just pray for me as I try to sing this. I want you to hear the words. And if you feel led to get up and hug his neck and Diane's neck, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. about sin and a 
preacher prayed for the preacher who prays with me down on my knees i'd like to shake the hand that reached out a hand to the hand that reached out to me i'd like to shake I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll leave the meet the preacher while everybody else sings. We got a couple more, so y'all go ahead and uh, worship with the Lord and, and our pastor. It's been good to all of us, I think. We have Nuanas coming up now to close out before the preacher can speak.
was thinking this morning, this might be the hardest song I've ever tried to get through. <laughs> this that I am froggy. <clears throat> but, but I was just thinking about years past, how we go back so far. And Diane's grandmother was like my grandmother. Every summer, they lived just next door to my grandma. And I spent more time there. And I can remember some advice she gave me when I was dating Carl, you know, about who to marry, who not to marry. And <laughs> she gave me some good good grandmotherly advice. But uh, th this song, I'm going to say a few things, a few things about it. Uh, I know it's getting late, but I had sung this song, Ellen's Here, and her family, and had never sung this song at a funeral. And I, the Lord let it impressed me. I was in the bathroom a couple of days before the funeral, and uh, this song was on my mind. And I said, Lord, I don't understand that. That's really not a funeral song. But I got to thinking about it, and it was. And after Mickey passed away, and I sung this at the funeral, it was just, it went right along with his service so completely. And Vicky came to the house, and I know, Mickey went through a time, it was a joke in the county, he wanted to just serve the Lord so bad, he took his TV out and he shot it. <laughs> but he learned he could bring it back in because it had an on and off knob. <laughs> that was a good joke among the family, wasn't it, Ellen? And uh, then he took a trip out west. Didn't know why, he just felt like he had to take a trip out west. And he got out there, and, and Mickey, Vicky told me this after she came back to the house after he passed away and had the service that when they was out there, he, he, they stopped at a rest area or somewhere, and he led a little boy to the Lord. That may be what Lord, that God had him out there for. And then Vicki told me this, and it just blessed my heart so much. And she said that uh, this young teenage boy, 16, was giving his daddy a lot of trouble, and so they called the, the you know, Mickey was a policeman, worked for the sheriff's department, and... Uh, his daddy called him to come to the house, and he got him in the car. And he said, let's don't go to jail. He said, let's just ride around and talk. And, of course, Mickey was a minister. People say, well, you can't be a preacher and be in law enforcement. That's who we need in law enforcement. But uh, he led that boy to the Lord. And several years later, he was about 21, I think, Vicky said. He, w he was married, and their trailer caught on fire he got his wife out but he died in the fire but he died saved because Mickey Woods led him to the Lord we never know the things the, and it's things that we don't even realize when we get to heaven the things that God's going to see this is what you did and it's things that we do not expect to get anything in return and I know Madison Diane, I could give them a card <clears throat> and tell them how much I appreciate them and love them, but a card couldn't do it. But we, nobody but them too knows the sacrifice. Any, anybody in ministry knows. I mean, Renata, Janelle, if, if you're singing and you're singing for the Lord, you know. You just, you just, you just feel that pull on what you've got to do. And this is a new track, and I've never used it before, so I hope it's right. I didn't like it as good as my old tape. went to heaven you were there with me we walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea I heard the angels singing someone called your name you turned and saw this young man he was smiling as he came he said, friend, 
like you may not know me now. And then he said, but wait. You used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Then another man stood before you, said, remember the time. A missionary came to your church, his pictures made you cry. Didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive, there was change. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so One by one they came, far as the eye could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices made, unnoticed on the earth, but in heaven now proclaimed. Now I know up in heaven we're not supposed to cry, but I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you. Great is your reward. Now sing with me. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so So glad you gave. I have just one more thing to say. I was thinking as I was singing that song that uh, I saw three of my family members come to know the Lord here at Battle Branch, and Madison baptized them. That's three that I know I'll see in heaven. And when my uncle passed, th things are not always being good. We have a very few bad and good. 
but when my Uncle Beatty passed away, he wasn't a perfect man. By far, none of us are. But when he passed away, there was his wife was standing there where he fed, and she told Pumpkin, what, what we call her, his daughter, said, do you see that? Do you see that? And there was a yellow glow that covered his bed when the Lord took him home. And she said, yes, Suzanne, that's the angel of the Lord taking Daddy home. And I just believe that with all my heart. And this morning, Janelle came up to me. And I thought, well, they might not want me to sing because I missed a couple of weeks. And But the Lord just laid this on my heart so strong because we've sung this for Madison several times for his birthday or pastor appreciation. And Janelle came up to me. I, I love how God confirms things. And, and she said, I brought the, ta the tape. Thank you. And I said, are, are you going to sing it? She said, no, I brought it in case you came. So thank you, Janelle. I think a, a lot of us can say amen to that. My three kids, 25 years, I guess, we've been here, and all of them have been led the Lord through the, our leaders, so Brother Madison, we, we appreciate that. And uh, and I didn't know what Renata or Noana was going to sing. Didn't know what Eve was going to sing, but the Lord just took care of him. And I, and I thank him for his whole spirit. <laughs> I don't know if I, Diane printed that song off on the internet. If nobody sung it, she was going to sing it. So, no, or she couldn't sing it. She couldn't sing it. So, uh, as long as we leave God in control, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> Madison, I'll turn it over to you. good to be here, and uh, I just think about a lot of things, uh, uh, don't know, uh, get through it or not, but just thinking back uh, over the years, uh, uh, 18 people, when I first come down at the little church, some of you remember it, and some of you might not, it wasn't very big. Um, you might stuff a hundred in there, I don't know. But uh, just uh, thinking about all the things that the Lord has done for me, but I just appreciate all of you. But I first would have to thank my wife because she's been there and helped me and a lot of times that people didn't know nothing about. Uh, but uh, appreciate her. And uh, and my family, um, I've been blessed that my sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws come and they're part of the church. And then I think back, there's a story with every one of you, every single one of you. There's a story with, with all of you. And I don't have the time today to tell the story, but uh, I appreciate every one of you and all that you've done. Got some cousins here and some friends from out of town that uh, is here, which has been a blessing to me. My neighbor that's only there part of time, <laughs> but uh, wonderful neighbor. Uh, thank God for her and her family. And, uh, Got one of my cousins back there, Max. He's See if I can tell the story. Me and Max was on a deer hunt. I guess he probably remembers it. I'll never forget it. 
man and woman that, that we were hunting with, we were sitting down to eat supper one night, and we went into, well, there's a couch in there, and we got to talking about the Lord. And uh, I guess you remember that, don't you, Max? Uh, boy, the Lord come in there that night and touched all of our hearts in a great mighty way. And uh, done a lot for us. God's been good. I, I look over the church and I just see so many faces and so much that God's done. But, you know, uh, it's, it's a good service today good time. Uh, I've had people say, well, you're going to be gone. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> We're just changing leadership. Uh, and I think you're going to have a great man. He, he was uh, in this church for a long time and was a great help to me and helped me in a great way. And then he went and pastored for, I believe, a little over 10 years. And uh, I don't think you'll find a better man. But, yeah, we're planning. We're not planning on leaving. I prayed this morning, and, and the Lord knows my heart. I'm not uh, quitting preaching by no means. I told the Lord, I said, I'm here for whatever you want, and I am. But I want to encourage you today is what I want to do is try to encourage you. Um, there's so many things I'd like to say, and as I look around and I see all your faces, and like I said, stories that uh, I know and things that we've talked about and, and problems that we've gone through, uh, just a wonderful God. I would have never dreamed, never, ever dreamed what God has done here at Battle Brains. And I don't want you to give me the glory for it. It all goes to God. Everything that has been done, God has done. But what, he, what God needs is people that are willing, uh, willing to just give themselves to God, and that's what all of you have done is give yourself to God. So we, we come from the little bitty church, and, and uh, there was a fellowship if some of you don't know, these Sunday school rooms back here was a fellowship hall that was setting up on this hill before or when the little church was down here. So the people decided, well, God had just blessed and saved and added to the church, and we needed more room. So uh, they, they agreed that we would take those Sunday or that fellowship hall and make Sunday school rooms out of it. And that's what happened, and we built a new sanctuary on that end, which is Sunday school rooms now. And God blessed us in a great, mighty way. We seen uh, souls saved, and we added on to it. We built that sanctuary, I believe, to hold 300 people. Was that about, about 200? And it, it filled up. So we built a wing off on this side, and it filled up. So we put one over here, and it did, and then we added to that. And then God allowed us to come over here, and as God did, uh, everything, God took care of everything that we needed, everything that we needed from our, our foundation right on up through everything, our electricians, plumbers, uh, you name it, uh, concrete guys, everything. God took care of, and we moved in this place and didn't owe a dime. Uh, so that's what God has done. And, and all of you people, uh, God has just added to it and added to it. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't know of a greater group of people than what's set here. Uh, God has, has worked in all of our lives and led us in the right way. So what I want to do today is to encourage you. I, the Lord showed me a long time ago, and it was like, uh, you know, you played tug of rope or whatever you call it, where some get on one side and some on the other and pulling the rope and trying to outdo the other. Well, what we've got to do, Satan is pulling on that rope on one end, and God is wanting his people to pull on the other end. And I want to tell you this, I've told this many times in this pulpit, 
God speaks to us through the Spirit, and the Spirit speaks to our heart. And, and I want to encourage you to get a hold of the right end of that rope and pull for the glory of God. Sometimes you might think it's hard, but if you will be faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. So I want to encourage you, no matter, and I know a lot of folks sitting here today and there's things you're going through. Some are going through sicknesses, uh, just a lot of things. I want you to know that, that me and Diane is always there. Our number's the same. And you can always call and say, I, I need prayer. We pray for you every day anyway, and we'll continue. Uh, we're not just throwing you out. We're just stepping aside, letting another man take hold, a younger man that is able uh, to go and do more than what we can do. But we're always out there. And, and we'll be there if you ever need us. So uh, don't think that we're, we're quitting the Lord because God's brought us too far uh, for us to stop now. And we will continue. So I want to encourage you today to purpose in your heart that you're going to follow God. And, and men, I want to tell you something. Uh, we need real men today. Men that will stand up and say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and I, can, I can tell you this uh, from experience. If you will stand up and be faithful to God, God will never leave you and never forsake you. God will always be there for you. Yes, there will be storms in your life. There will be heartaches, troubles, and trials. But I'm going to tell you something. The God that I'm serving will always be with you. I had read some scripture I thought I was going to preach on, but I'm not going to. I just felt like at, as the service went along that I needed to encourage you. So I want you to think about this today and think about where you're at in life. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that are just sort of right there on the, the borderline. There's a lot of people that, that are a hold of the plow and pulling. Uh, but, but what God is looking for and what God looks for every day is a Christian, a man, woman, boy, or girl, that is willing to say, yes, God, I'll step out. And people, I'm here today to tell you that, that God will be with you and they will be miracles in your life uh, that, that you, you would never dream of. Uh, there's a saying that God's got bigger dreams than you got, and that's true. That's true. God has got great things for every single one of us uh, if we will just step out. I want you to think about this. How long has God been stirring your heart? How long has he been touching you you just now and again, and then sometimes very heavily, uh, for you just to, to, to step out and just bow down before him and give your life to God, people, I'm going to tell you something. It's the best life that you'll ever have. Yes, many, every day, a day just about that, that I have pastored, uh, of the evenings, uh, I would have to, the family would be out playing, talking, and I'd have to leave and go prepare for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Yes, I had to give up some things. But I'll tell you what, my boys are grown, and my grandkids are growing. And I'll guarantee you, any one of them will put their arm around my neck and tell me they love me. Now, what more could you ask for in life? My wife, I can go and say, honey, we need to pray about this. Oh, they, they, at the times that me and her have got up out of our chairs and knelt by the, the coffee table and held hands and prayed for you, for this church, for people that have needs. And I'm telling you something. The God that I am serving, this is what God's looking for, is somebody 
And every one of us that's saved, God is looking for somebody that is willing to bow before him and say, God, I want to follow you. Now, listen, a lot of people are looking for wealth, amounts of money in the bank. What God gives you with love, the love that God gives you is worth more. I mean, your money cannot bring what God can put in your heart. So, and God's willing to give it to anybody that is willing to say, yes, God, I come to you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I give myself to you. I will follow you. Now, listen, God brought me out. <laughs> God brought me out of the, 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 the as deep a sin as, as a man could ever want to go. God brought me out. And, and when he stirred my heart, I said, yes, God, I'll, I'll give you my life. And that's what God asked, is for you to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing. But you know what Satan's doing? He's standing right there on your shoulder. Saying, you're messing up. How many times did Satan tell me, you're messing up? I remember when God called me, I announced my call to preach. Pastor said, uh, Madison will be preaching on Sunday morning. Oh, how I had a battle. I thought, well, nobody, nobody would ever want to listen to somebody like me. But God has blessed me and blessed me and blessed me. And this is all God wants. God wants somebody that's willing, young, old, whatever, to give themselves to God. So many people are picking, oh, I tried it, picking what they want to do for God. Yeah, I tried it. I wanted to pick what I wanted to do for God. But sometimes, and this is what we're losing today, we're losing the God call people. We're losing the warriors that are willing to sacrifice their time and pray. There's so many today that's looking for the spotlights. And God is looking for somebody will dedicate themselves to him. Now, I want you to think about this. I'm going to ask Diane to come and sing whatever God's put on her heart. And I want you to think about this. Where am I at with the Lord? Where am I? And if he is, now listen, the Lord speaks to your heart, to you inside. And if you feel him stirring you, that is the Holy Spirit that is speaking to you, and God's wanting to do something. Now, when Jesus passes by, that's the time that you need to do something for the Lord. Now, are you willing today? Are you willing to take a hold of that rope, step out, and say, God, here I am. I dedicate myself to you, and I'm willing to follow you. And people, I want to tell you something. It's untold what God can do if you're willing I want to ask you to stand. As they gambled on the broke, he walked What about it today? If God is speaking to your heart, would you be willing to step out and come and talk to him about whatever he's speaking to you about? Will you? If you're not for sure about your salvation, you're to come. What about it?
spoke to your heart, why don't you come and just thank him? I mean, you know, uh, he's done a lot for you, so why don't you just, just thank him? tugging at your heart for any reason you want to come today. Okay. It's been a pleasure to take care of y'all for 30 years. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you around. And a lot of them I'll see you at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't reckon we're done quite yet. Um, I can remember, I can remember, uh, I guess the first message I think I ever heard you preach was at my ordination over at Community. I'd been Madison's banker and invited him to the ordination. He preached the service uh, or the, the ordination message, I guess. Um, so we go back a long ways. And then I can remember when we, came down to the little church, and we'd been on Sunday mornings, but we'd never been on a Sunday night. So uh, I remember the very first Sunday night, we came to the service down at the little church, and um, and I said, Janelle, I don't want to be late. So we got there about a quarter till seven. <laughs> you know, I had always gone to a church where the service started at seven o'clock. They started at six. And we parked, and the parking lot was full. And, you know, we got a pretty good service even that last 15 minutes. It was, it was we, were, we were very blessed, even that first 45-minute late service. Um, I've heard Madison say many, many times, and I'm going to just tell you, Madison is, is a very humble man. I've heard him talk about uh, great preachers. I've heard him talk about Billy Graham, and Billy Graham was a, a great preacher. Charles Stanley, you've used him in your messages. And, uh, and, I've, and I tell you what, uh, those men were able to get to a certain group. But Madison has been able to get to a certain group. There's people that, that would not have gone to see Charles Stanley that came and hear old country, plain old Madison, preached the gospel. And you preached it in a way that everybody could understand. I don't care how sophisticated or how, I'm not going to say unsophisticated, but you know what I'm saying. Um, the church does have something for you. And uh, we're up here. I'm glad you didn't open the pulpit. And I'm going to read it. It says, as you embark on your new journey, we know the work of a pastor is without end. Thank you for giving unto the Lord and tending to your flock so well over the years. We love you. Battle Branch Baptist Church family. And
I could hand it to him and we could just all go up, but uh, I don't think Kale's going to be up there until, what, 1230, quarter to one. And there may be somebody that's got something on your heart that you'd like to say, now be a good time. Is there anything? Anybody have anything on your heart? Anybody got something bubbling? We sure could. If I get somebody up here to help us. What is it in a book or where's that? Black book. Uh, those of you that'll come up and help me. Come around so we can be heard on that mic right there. Number 13. 